As we've seen in the last couple of videos, the very first disk operating systems were very, very primitive, but despite their limited capability, there was still a great improvement versus trying to get things done with a cassette. And frankly, for their time, it was a pretty good fit. If you think about it, these original five and a quarter inch floppy drives only held about 88K worth of data. So the fact that these early operating systems took up little or no space even on those disks was a big plus. And they also had a very small RAM footprint as well, because in these early days, RAM was still a precious commodity. So it was actually a pretty good fit despite their limited capability. However, with falling RAM prices and uh, increasing disk capacities, it wasn't too long until bigger, more fully functional operating systems like we think of came out. Um, of these, by far the most popular and well-known was CPM. Um, during the next five years or so, CPM fell into place as a de facto standard, and with it in place, number of software titles available just took off, just exploded. And with that, of course, computer sales turned around and increased as well. So this was quite a time of growth for the microcomputer industry. Unfortunately for 6,800 users, none of this mattered because CPM and all this code for CPM was all based on 8080 or Z80 CPUs and wouldn't run on the 6,800. Now that doesn't mean 6,800 didn't have their own operating system. Um, and that's what we're gonna start looking at here. An operating system called Flex was the equivalent of CPM over here in the 6800 world. Flex became a de facto standard across a number of different 6800 machines that were out there. And actually it remained very popular even for the next generation of Motorola processors, the 6809. So that's what we're gonna dig in today is take a look at Flex, watch it run on here. Um, take a look at it from the user's perspective, uh, maybe a second video looking at it from a programmer's perspective, and also go ahead and see how it compared to CPM in a number of cases. Before we boot Flex on this machine, just a brief history of Flex. Southwest Technical Products developed their own floppy disk system called the MF68. It came out in very late 1977. It used a cabinet about the size of this one here with two of these SA400 drives in it. These are the very first generation drives from Shugart, only about 88K. The two drives were over here on the right and on the left was a panel just to make room for the, uh, the power supply that was in the cabinet. So very similar to what we have here. The um, controller they developed used the new Western Digital 1771 chip. This was a smart LSI chip, 40 pins, that did all the hard work of making a floppy disk controller or soft sector controller. So they were able to fit the controller on one of the small I.O. cards that goes on the SS30 bus in the back of the computer. Contrast this to the Percom controller we've been looking at, which was the full-size SS50 bus card, um, completely populated with TTL chips. Typically, any of the earlier controllers were going to be hard sector controllers using TTL because it was just too complex to develop a soft sector controller using discrete components and uh, as smaller cards that went in these computers. Once these Western Digital chips came out, pretty much all controllers went soft sector and used that chip because it provided so much of the work in one big LSI chip. All right, so Southwest was going to need an operating system to run this, so they contacted Technical Systems Consultants, which is also known as TSC, who had written some quality software for their 6800 machines and asked them to develop an operating system. So TSC developed what was called MiniFlex originally and just became known as Flex um, soon afterwards and from then on. And that ran on any 6800 computer and later it ran on 6809, so it, it had quite a long run. TSC retained their rights to the operating system so they could sell it to any manufacturer, not just Southwest. So like CPM became a standard across multiple 8080 and Z80 computers, Flex became the standard across pretty much all the 6800 family computers that came out over the next several years. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and boot this. I have one problem in that I do not have the original disk controller board from Southwest. All I have is the Percom controller that we've been looking at in these videos. And neither Southwest nor um, TSC supported that board themselves, but Flex was designed to easily run on different hardware configurations and so it was not hard for me to go ahead and write drivers to enable the Percom board to work under Flex. It's basically a little more than a sector read routine, sector write routine, a disk select, just a few things like that. And then some code that is required to help boot it for the first time when you power on load Flex into memory. So I've got that all working on the Percom controller. Um, just like Z80, um, excuse me, just like CPM could be ported to run on different machines by changing the BIOS. 
here you could do the same kind of thing. Although frankly, I've done a lot of CPM BIOSes and this process was quite a bit simpler than getting a, a CPM BIOS running for a different machine. All right, so that does it. We'll go ahead and do a video cut and get this set up and we'll boot um, Flex 2.0 running on a Percon controller with the SA400 drive. So this will be pretty close to a pretty early system from Southwest. All right, we're all set to go ahead and load Flex. We'll go ahead and uh, zoom in on the monitor. This is where we'll do the rest of the work for this session, this video. All right, you can see we have our uh, swap bug prompt and now we need to boot the disk. And to do that, swap bug, bug provided the D command. D command went out to their controller and loaded track zero, sector zero, which contained the flex loader, which did the rest of the work. Fortunately, again, I don't have that um, controller in here, so the D command won't do us any good. But I can go to the Percom disk, uh, Percom EEPROM. I can do that with the Z command, which jumps to C1000. I'm in MPX now. And from MPX or MiniDOS for that matter, I can do a load from disk one, which is the very first disk, and specify sector zero, which would be sector zero on track zero. So this is loading the exact same boot sector that the D command would have done. So now I exit back to swap bug and hit go, and it's now executing the data from that sector, which is the flex loader. All right, you see we have flex 2.0 already up and running, and it's asking for the date. Flex 2, as you would expect, is like a second generation, much like the CPM 2, 2.2 that we're all very, very familiar with. It's asking for the date. This allows us to date stamp files. Don't have to have a real time clock or anything. It's just gonna use it for the date. And so now any files we create will have this date information in here. CPM didn't add this until later in CPM 3. So this is kind of nice to have. The three pluses are the prompt from Flex. Uh, just like CPM, you type in a command, it's gonna go out to disk and look for it. The directory command on Flex is called cat for catalog. This is the one that comes with the system and you can see here we have a lot of CMD files. These CMDs are all command files. This is equivalent to the .com in um, CPM. So when you type a file name, it goes out and looks for something with a CMD and if it finds it, it executes it. All right, we can do uh, wildcards much like uh, you could with CPM, but you don't actually have to type in the asterisk. So for example, I can do c.cmd. It's gonna get any command files that start with C. All right, and you can see I have a couple more cats here. I got a cat W and a cat F. These are user written programs. These are things that came on the distribution. Cat W is a, is a wide display of a catalog. This would be uh, sort of like the directory command in um, CPM. And then cat F is a full directory where it gives us um, additional information, including where it begins and ends on the disk sector wise size. And then you can see our dates are showing up there. All right, so just like CPM, people wrote programs and they essentially became nice commands. Uh, you could keep anything you wanted on your disk and have a full set of commands in addition to what came with, um, uh, with the operating system itself. All right, so we can uh, demonstrate a couple of the typical commands that you have in an operating system. For example, I can copy, uh, let's copy catw dot uh, command to, let's call it test.command. I already got that out there, so it's gonna want me to confirm it, and I'll say yes. That's something CPM didn't do. It, that can be considered good or bad. All right, and so now if I run test, you'll see we have our wide directory listing um, just the same. Okay, and you can rename a file, so we named test.command to test2.command. And now test2 gives us our wide directory listing. And then of course you can delete files. You can just double verify. And so now that will be gone. All right, so right off the bat, you see very similar to CPM. The prompt's a little different. We don't have our A and B drives. Uh, we'll see that they're drives zero, one, and two. You can see the zero dot, dot test dot two. Uh, we'll get into all that in the next video and demonstrate some more of the commands. We'll assemble some files see how that works, run basic, uh, and take a quick, a quick look at what it was like to use, uh, per con I mean, use Flex on these computers. And you'll see that it was, it was a very nice operating system on its own, completely on par with CPM or anything else that was available on the 8080 side.